Welcome to a Slapshot edition of the Russian Rulers Podcast. Today's episode is Muscovite Russia, Education. Again, this is from the book History of Russia, and it's 8th edition. I want to thank again Professor Steinberg for allowing me to read from it, uh, which the book he co-authored with Nicholas Ryazanovsky. Education in pre-Petrine Russia remains a controversial subject. Estimates of Moscovite enlightenment have ranged from an emphasis on the well-nigh total illiteracy and ignorance to assertions that there existed in the realm of the Tsars a widespread ability to read, write, and understand church teachings and practices. The highly skeptical views of Milyakov and other critics appear on the whole rather convincing. Still, in this case, as in many others, one has to strive for a balanced judgment. The Muscovite culture that we have discussed in this chapter could not have existed without some enlightenment. The enormous Muscovite state, and in particular its numerous bureaucracies, required, as a minimum, some education of officials. More speculative, although not necessarily fantastic, is Vladimirsky Budinov's suggestion that Muscovites, like later old believers, generally could read and have thorough knowledge of their religious books. Finally, we do possess considerable direct evidence of education in Muscovite Russia. Some education remained and developed in towns, in the many monasteries, and among the clergy generally. While much of it must have been an extremely elementary character, more advanced schools appeared in the 17th century, especially after the acquisition of Ukraine by Muscovy. In Kiev in Ukraine, which was more open to the West and where orthodoxy had to defend itself against Catholicism, Metropolitan Peter Moglia, or Mohila, founded an academy modeled on the Jesuit colleges in 1631. In Moscow in 1648 to 49, a boyar, Theodore Richev, built a monastery and invited some 30 Kievan monks to teach Slavonic, Latin, Greek, rhetoric, philosophy, and other disciplines. In 1666, Simeon of Polotsk established a school where he taught Latin and the humanities. After his death, the school was reestablished by a student, Sylvester Medvedev. In 1683, a school that offered Greek was opened in conjunction with a printing office and eventually contained up to 230 students. Later, in the 1680s, the Medvedev and the printing press schools combined to form the Slavonic Greek Latin Academy, headed by learned Greek monks, the Lucid brothers, Ianosikis, and Sophroninus. As planned, the academy was to protect the faith and to control knowledge as well as disseminate it. While Kiev and Moscow clearly stood out as centers of Russian enlightenment, some relatively advanced teaching also went on in places like the Holy Trinity St. Sergius Monastery, and the cities of Novgorod and Kharkov. The Muscovite school curriculum resembled closely at corresponding levels that of medieval Europe. In particular, it included almost no study of science and technology. Of the humanities, history fared best. In the 16th and especially the 17th century, Russian textbooks in such fields as arithmetic, history, and grammar Dictionaries and even elementary encyclopedias made their appearance, and toward the end of the period, Sylvester Medvedev compiled the first Russian bibliography. Well, I hope you enjoyed that really short little uh, episode. Uh, again, really highly suggest the book, A History of Russia, and its eighth edition by Ryazanovsky and Steinberg. And I hope you have a uh, great Russian day. And as always, das vidanya, spasibo bolshoya.